To say the F-35 project has come in for a lot of bad press over years is a bit of an understatement, with any number of critics and armchair pilots pitching in at every little piece of bad news that percolates through the internet. But with the aircraft now being deployed by the air forces of the countries that have bought them, the real story of how good or bad it is comes from the people that really matter, namely the pilots that actually fly the plane every day and the air crews that look after them. This is why they think the F-35 is the best fighter in the world today. This video is sponsored by Royal Air Force Engineering. Now, if you want to learn more about working on cutting edge technology upon which the RAF relies, be that state of the art aircraft or communications technology, then head on over to the RAF Engineering website, the address of which is in the description below. Although it's been seen by some as a replacement for three main aircraft, namely the F-16, F-18E and the Harrier, a sort of three in one plane, it's really three new planes that share the F-35 name with some commonality between them, such as the cockpit, engine, parts of the airframe and avionics. Pretty much everything else has been specifically designed for the tasks required for each of the A, B and C variants. The A version is the lightest and intended for use with the Air Force with its conventional takeoff and landing. The B version is the heaviest and intended for the Marine Corps and navies like the Royal Navy and has a short takeoff and vertical landing ability, allowing it to be used from smaller carriers if required and makeshift runways closer to the front line. The C version is intended for use with the US Navy carriers and uses an assisted takeoff and arrested carrier landing. The F-35 is a so-called fifth generation aircraft because it has taken advantage of the technology which has been developed in the last 20 years or so. But what does this mean in practical terms? Well, to give you a very simple but effective example, you only need to look at model aircraft and helicopters in particular. About 25 years ago in the mid 1990s, I used to fly model aircraft for a hobby. Now at the time, model helicopters were the most difficult of all the types of aircraft to fly. These took a lot of skill and practice just to get them to hover above the ground and do basic manoeuvres just like the full size ones. Much of the time it would all end up rather badly and you became an expert rebuilder as well as an expert flyer. Fast forward 25 years and you can now buy toy helicopters and their modern equivalent, the quadcopters, from around $20. These are things that a child could fly in the house and can even do acrobatic tricks of a touch of a button, something that would have been unimaginable 25 years earlier. So what has changed? The helicopters or quadcopter, be that a toy or a proper model, still works in exactly the same way as it always did. What has advanced hugely in this time is the electronics, namely the miniaturization of computers and the tiny gyros has allowed tiny autopilots to be developed but do the hard work of keeping the helicopter or quadcopter stable in the air and you just need to tell it to go up, down, left or right. Now imagine what you can do when you have tens of billions of dollars and 20 years invested not only into the electronics and computers but also software and high speed data connectivity. The F-35 is the closest there is at the moment to being a software defined aircraft which allows it to change fundamental aspects of the plane's behavior whilst in flight and allows it to do things that were previously impossible. Although the F-35 is a multi-role aircraft, one of its primary goals, as some pilots like to say, is to kick down the door by suppression of enemy air defenses and to allow other aircraft in behind them. To do this, they need to know what they are flying into well ahead of time with all possible information available to identify the target and eliminate it without being detected until it's too late. Pilots talk much of the increased situational awareness they have in the F-35 
with far more information being gathered than any previous generation aircraft. In fact, they have been called a mini version of the AWACS planes, even though they have less powerful radar. Because of its stealth capabilities, the F-35s can get much closer to the threat and get a much more detailed view, which is sent to the rest of the mission group, but this is only part of what they can do. Because the same aircraft are supplied to the NATO partners, pilots from the different countries can train and learn from each other, and this allows for a much more integrated unit when the time comes. The F-35 has been described as a flying sponge, soaking up signals across the electromagnetic spectrum, but whilst keeping its own emissions, such as its radar cross-section and the heat signature from its engine, to an absolute minimum, along with its stealth capabilities. Compared to previous generation aircraft, the radar on the F-35 is electronically steerable instead of mechanically. This is so fast that it can effectively do the job of a surface-to-air radar and then switch to an air-to-air -air radar and back again and integrate the data so that it looks like one combined radar view to the pilot. The F-35 has a Distributed Aperture System, or DAS. This comprises of six infrared cameras flush-mounted to the aircraft's skin, giving a 360-degree coverage to look for other planes, or the rocket motors of missiles. It also has radio antennas embedded in the edges of the wings and the tail to detect radar from the ground or air. If any one of these sensors picks up a signal of interest, others are automatically trained onto the same line of sight to fill in any missing data. If a threat is a missile, the DAS can work out its position and course to locate the launch site as well as alert the pilot to take action. If a signal is determined to be coming from an area covered by the radar, it's automatically told to look into the same area to find more information about the threat. All of this is done without pilot involvement, and the information is prioritised by the central computer so that only the most important information is given to the pilot. This greatly reduces the workload that in a previous generation aircraft would have taken a crew of two to handle, even though they would be working with much less information. This and the jet stealth capabilities allow F-35 pilots to detect an enemy threat at a far greater distance than before, allowing them to deal with it before the enemy even knows they are there. F-35s work in groups where all the sensor data is shared within the group's network and the command center. Just four F-35s could cover an area of 130 kilometers deep by 200 kilometers wide. This fusion sensor information allows all the F-35 pilots in the battle space to see the same picture. If one F-35 picks up on a threat, all the others are alerted and the pilot from one F-35 can see what another F-35's sensor suite is seeing. All this makes it almost impossible for an enemy to make a surprise attack on the group. Having multiple sensors on multiple aircraft that are linked together means that if an enemy is able to jam one, others are still available. And because of their network nature, other F-35s in the network can identify the source and launch countermeasures. This is why so much has been invested into making the F-35 as easy to fly as possible. The pilot has a huge amount of information about his surroundings at his fingertips, so if it takes all your time to fly the plane, you can't handle all this information effectively. Take the helmet, for example, which is an integral part of a plane. This is custom made for each pilot for a perfect fit and is lighter than previous types for less neck strain in high G maneuvers. The helmet provides a 360 degree view around the plane wherever the pilot is looking, and also shows all the relevant data the pilot needs overlaid in his field of view. The helmet can control the radar to track along the pilot's line of sight, even if his view is blocked by the body of the aircraft itself, and can generate a fire control solution for guns and missiles simultaneously, meaning that he or she can look through the body of a plane to see the target without having to change the position of the aircraft. 
The helmet also contains a night vision camera that shows flying at night to the pilot almost like flying in daylight, which greatly reduces the chance of disorientation. And it can also show the infrared image from the DAS cameras from around the plane, again giving a 360 degree coverage. Color weather radar data can also be shown on the pilot's visor to see thunderstorms, squall lines and fronts that also could be a hazard to the plane. The F-35 is also far more self-aware than any previous aircraft. The aircraft monitors its entire airframe and how well it's reacting. If it detects a problem, it will adapt the whole aircraft's flying characteristics to compensate. It can also do the same depending upon what the pilot is requiring of the plane and changes the way the aircraft flies to make it easier for the pilot in demanding situations. Much has been made of early tests where an F-35 lost out to a 40-year-old F-16 in a dogfight, but the software controlling the plane has come a long way since then. At the 2017 Paris Air Show, Lieutenant Colonel David Chip Burke confirmed the plane's real dogfighting abilities by performing maneuvers that had previously been done in an F-22 Raptor with thrust vectoring but this time in an F-35 without thrust vectoring. John Beasley, the Lockheed F-35 chief test pilot, said that the F-35 was as maneuverable as any other aircraft. He said that the Russian fighters are often shown performing amazing maneuvers, but what you're really seeing are the skills of an exceptional pilot, but that the F-35 is an aircraft that everyone can fly exceptionally. Beasley also said that they used the Navy approach for test maneuvers with a high angle of attack. That's when the nose is high in the air and the aircraft slows dramatically. One of the tests included turning off all the flight control limitations and getting the plane all wrapped up to a point where it lost control and then turning the flight control system back on and having the plane recover itself with little or no input from the pilot. The F-35B Stovall version also shows that the flight control system can make the pilot's life much easier than the Harrier it replaces, as squadron leader Andy Edgell of the RAF can attest to. As an ex-Harrier pilot, he said that landing the Harrier on an aircraft carrier could be borderline terrifying, and hovering was like riding a unicycle. You have to continuously pedal or move something, whether it be your left hand, your right hand or your feet. The F-35B, by contrast, could hover by itself hands-free for as long as it had fuel in its tanks. Edgell was also the first to perform an aft landing on an aircraft carrier. That's basically landing on the carrier from the wrong end, a procedure that could be used if the carrier was dead in the water but facing the wrong way into the wind for landings. Again, something that he said was really rather benign because the plane just adjusted itself to compensate to fly with the tailwind. The F-35B is also one of the few planes that can do shipborne rolling vertical landings using thrust vectoring and the flight control system to slow down and then come to a stop using just the computer controlled disc brakes. This would be used when the plane might be still carrying a full weapons load and a vertical landing could damage the landing gear otherwise. These are just a small selection of why many pilots think that the F-35 is the best fighter in the world today. And this is just the first foray into software controlled aircraft, something which we will see a lot more of in the future. But for now, the F-35 is the king of the hill.